Good morning. I'm Gordy Locke here live at South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. Uh, glad you're joining us this morning or maybe later on today. But it's just a joy to be here. Had a great service Sunday. Uh, Pentecost Sunday. We celebrated Pentecost Sunday. And I'm going to speak a little bit about Pentecost again today and the Holy Spirit. Linda Mori uh, shared from the Word of God. And she brought the sermon. She did a great job. She was so involved in the service. It was pretty cool. She uh, led the skit and music and worship. And it was just a really good time in the Lord. Um, we all... We all joined in together with our little um, flames for tongues of fire, uh, dressed in red. I wore my red today again for that, but uh, it was a, it was a really good time in the Lord. And I would encourage you to uh, watch it if you haven't. Uh, you can check it out on our uh, app, website, Facebook, uh, YouTube. There's a lot of different ways to uh, catch up if you miss, missed us, whether it's one of our uh, services on Sunday morning or one of our devotionals Monday through Friday. So uh, I encourage you, if you haven't seen it, if you want to watch it again, it was pretty, pretty fun uh, cele- celebration of Pentecost. Acts 2, she, she taught on, uh, Linda taught on Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. What a wonderful move of the Holy Spirit. Before that, uh, the believers were not, didn't have the Holy Spirit. In, in receive the Holy Spirit, but uh, as Jesus or as the Holy Spirit Himself introduced Him, well, I should say, the Holy Spirit introduced Himself to the early church because they didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was. And to be honest, they were all in the upper room. I'm guessing, uh, just missing Jesus. Jesus taught and lived his life before them, and they followed him, and they missed him. And when the Holy Spirit came, I I, I can't even imagine the the wind and the tongues as a fire. It must have been a just a fantastic move of the Holy Spirit. And we too have been promised the Holy Spirit because Jesus is no longer here. So. We are so blessed to have the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus promised. Uh, this, these are words of Jesus in John 16, 4 through 15. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Rather, are you filled with, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But I will go, and I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the Prince of the world now stands condemned. I have much to say to you, more than you can bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. We will gl- he will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit before he was crucified and rose from the dead. He talked about the promise of the Holy Spirit 
We have the Holy Spirit. We received the Holy Spirit when we became, well, we, when we trusted Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. And before <laughs> Acts chapter 2, no one had that privilege. And what a privilege it is to have the Holy Spirit to lead our lives, to guide our lives, to teach us. And we, I believe that I need to think more about the Holy Spirit's leading in my life and the role of the Holy Spirit. We talk about the Father, we talk the Heavenly Father, we talk about Jesus, but the Holy Spirit introduced himself at Pentecost to all believers that would receive and believe in Jesus. There's a, Sarah Young writes a, a really neat devotional. It's called Jesus is Calling. And this kind of goes along with the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit's mentioned in this one devotional that I read, but the Holy Spirit, <laughs> let me just read this. Seek my face at the beginning of your day. This practice enables you to put me on and wear me throughout the day. Most people put on clothes soon after rising from bed. Similarly, the sooner you put me on by communicating with me, the better prepared you are for whatever comes your way. To wear me is essentially to have my mind, to think my thoughts. Ask the Holy Spirit to control your thinking. Be transformed by his renewal within you. Thus, you are well equipped to face whatever people and situations I bring your way. Clothing your mind in me is your best preparation for each day. This discipline brings joy and peace to you and those around you. Really like that last statement. This discipline, being a disciple, brings joy and peace to you and those around you. To clothe ourselves in the Holy Spirit. Just like we get up in the morning, first first thing we do before we got in public anyways, is get dressed properly. And that's what we're asked to do. There's a couple of scriptures that, that actually talk about clothing ourselves. Uh, Romans 13, 14. Rather, close yourselves with the Lord Jesus and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. And that's another thing. We think... Uh, in the morning, that's when a lot of us do our devotionals, but um, thinking of the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives in the beginning of the day and recognizing uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at the beginning of the day and clothing ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ to start out our day. And again, this discipline brings joy and peace to you and those around you. Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, <clears throat> excuse me, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Those are things that Paul wrote to the Colossians, the church at Colossae, to do is to clothe. Be clothed with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Those are some really, <clears throat> I think that they, they, they help me to think about, to clothe myself with the Lord Jesus Christ and to call upon him in the morning, uh, to reach out to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit throughout the day, to pray, we talk we talked for I talked for several months about the, the battle plan for prayer, the book that we we read here as a staff and as some of the church members. But just to start out our day, like you have this morning, those that are, that are live, um, contemplating things as Christians, as Christ followers, to do what would God have us to do today? Um, I think I shared this several months ago or a few months ago anyways, about um, waking up in the morning and say, hey, God, and in, in a reverent way, what would you like us to do today? 
God has something for us all to do today. Uh, we need to count on him to clothe ourselves, to be led by the Holy Spirit. And Pentecost is a great celebration, and not to be forgotten, not to be forgotten about the Holy Spirit, but to invite him to lead us throughout our day. So I'm just, we're just going to pray now. Lord, we just thank you for this time together. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to guide our lives, to lead us, to teach us. I thank you, Lord, for the Father, our Heavenly Father, for Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, and our friend. Thank you for the Godhead, the three in one. Lord, I just pray now for Pastor Keith and Linda as a continued vacation. Just thank you that you have blessed them with some time away to refresh, to rejuvenate. And I just pray for the body of Christ, those here locally at South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church, but the body of Christ in all around the world, Lord, that we would be united in you. Pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you Sunday. For those of you who make it here, uh, the youth are going to have the service. Sue Fuller is a youth, our youth leader. And we're going to have a really neat service, I'm sure. When the youth get involved, things can get interesting. So I invite you all here Sunday morning. Uh, looking forward to that. But in the meantime, you have a great day and have a blessed week.